Adding draggable buttons to my application launch pad wasn't as simple as I'd hoped. In this video, I'll explain the problems I had so that you won't have to have them too. I'm Hugh, and this is another video in my series on coding an application launch pad in C Sharp. In the last video, I showed you how to move the controls at runtime. In this video, I'll explain how to add mouse event handlers to any buttons that you create in code, and also how to fix some other potential problems. So here's my application launch pad project. Now in the past, I've already programmed most of the functionality. Let me just quickly run this to recap. So I've got this recent files menu and I can pick a whole load of buttons that I've previously saved. And I can click one of these to, to launch the application. I thought initially when I was developing this new version that I would just integrate the dragging functionality that I programmed into the test application, which I showed in the last video in this series, and all would be well. I'd press Control and the left mouse button. Let's do this with Squeak, and then I'd be able to drag the button around. But look what happens. Uh, it's leapt up to the left-hand corner, and it keeps trying to follow my mouse. And, oh, what a nightmare. Okay, so why is that happening? Well, it's because I've used this flow layout panel. Remember, the flow layout panel is what auto-aligns all the controls for me, so I don't have to worry about arranging them. Well, I have to turn off its flowability, otherwise it will keep on trying to auto-align them when I'm in the process of dragging, and this is how I do it. So I've commented it out here, but I have to, on mouse down, turn off the automatic alignment, and I do that by calling suspend layout, and on mouse up, I have to turn it back on again. And now, all being well, if I show you again, load up the same lot of buttons which I've saved previously, again, control left click on squeak, and now it, uh, it drags around quite nicely, and has the behavior that I want. But how do I actually get it to reorder, to stay into the position that I want to move it to? So what I want to do is, once I've finished dragging a button around on the form, I want to find out if it overlaps a button underneath, and then put it after that button, so change the order. There are many ways you can do that, and you can use Windows API functions and find Windows handles and all sorts of clever things. You can Google for that in your own time. I've decided to do something a bit different. So here on mouse up, I've just re-indexed the button by calling this function, which I'll explain in a minute, get index of overlapped button. And then I've changed the child index. The child index is the uh, number, the index in the panel, in the flow layout panel of a button, and when I change the index, then that positions the control at that new index. I've explained that in the previous video. So let's just look at this function that I've written. So I go to the definition, and what this does is it tries to find a location of the button that I'm moving around, the X and the Y positions of the, the, the button, and then it looks in the set of controls in the flow layout panel. All the controls are the, the buttons that are already there. And if the location of the button that I'm dragging, B location dot location, if B location dot X is greater than B1 dot location X, B1 is one of the buttons in the flow layout panel, and B dot location X is less than B1 dot location X, plus the button width, plus BW width, and, well, you can read all this on your own. What I'm essentially doing is trying to find out if the X and Y locations, the top left-hand corner of the button I'm dragging, that's B, overlaps the uh, button underneath. Is it greater than, is it within the bounds of one of the controls in the flow layout panel? So I just iterate through those controls using this for each loop. You can study this in your own time if you can't figure it out, but that's essentially what I'm doing. Is I'm trying to find out if the button I'm dragging overlaps one of the controls that's in the flow layout panel already, and if so, it re-indexes it. Let's try it out. Again, load my set of buttons. 
pick squeak control left button. So if this X and Y of this squeak overlaps the uh, button underneath, it should be placed after that button release. And there it goes. So again, overlap it. Well, let's put it right at the end here. And there it goes. There's one other important thing I've had to do in this application, which wasn't in the previous version of my application launcher, and that is to add these mouse event handlers whenever a new button is created. Remember, a button is created when I drag a, a file or a program from the Windows File Explorer or when I load up a saved configuration and create the buttons based on the information in that configuration file, as I've explained in previous videos. Well, this time I've had to add these event handlers to each button so that the button can respond to the mouse down, mouse move and mouse up events. But apart from that, it's really just been a matter of using the existing code and integrating the dragging um, behavior that I explained in the past video. So let me just quickly uh, page down through this so you can see my code and pause it if you want to take a closer look at it. If you followed the earlier videos, this should be fairly self-explanatory. Most of this code has appeared in my earlier projects. Of course, this is not the only way you can program all this functionality and you might want to try other ways of creating event handlers, creating uh, dealing with buttons, with dragging, and so on. But this is a fairly basic uh, and functional version of the application launchpad, including drag and drop behavior of the buttons. But what if you don't want controls to auto align themselves? After all, in the original Windows 3 Program Manager, which is what gave me the idea for this project, the icons stay exactly where they are, inside their windows. They don't auto-align. For that sort of behaviour, I need to get rid of the flow layout panel that I've used up to now. But that, I soon discovered, introduces some other programming problems. I'll explain those problems in the next video in this series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload new videos. And I'll see you again soon.